morning, boys and girls. A warm welcome to you. It's so good to see you again. Before we start our program, let's close our eyes and pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this Sabbath. Thank you that we can be here together and learn more about you. Help us to know that you are always nearby and that you always want us to tell the truth. In Jesus' name alone, amen. Let's sing a song! Did you have a birthday this week? Happy birthday! I hope that it was a wonderful day filled with everything that you have ever hoped and dreamed. I love birthdays, but more than the presents, I really enjoy spending time with the people, family and friends that I love. I hope that your birthday was very special. Let's sing a song for all our friends that had a birthday this week. Jesus has changed my life. Jesus has changed my life. Now, boys and girls, it is time for our mission story. Our mission story today is from the country of Guinea, and the city is called Conakry. Now. Something interesting I'd like to share with you. The flag of Guinea. Can you identify the colors on the flag? Yes. On the left, we have red. In the center, we have yellow. And on the right, we have green. Let me tell you something about this flag. Did you know that the red color symbolizes the blood of the martyrs who died during slavery and wars in the country of Guinea. The yellow represents the sun and the richness of the country. The green represents Guinea's vegetation. That's interesting to know. Well, our story today is entitled A New Life. A New Life. And the story is about a little boy by the name of Moriba. Now little Moriba was always an obedient boy. But 
his life changed when he was only six years old. His mother died and his father had no time for the boy because he was very busy working on the family farm in the West Cent African country of Guinea. Father's second wife had no time for the boy because she was caring for her own five boys and four girls. No one even fed Moriba. No one hugged him or even said a kind word to him. Mariba became rude. He refused to work on the family farm. If father asked him to deliver a message, he would stay out all day playing with friends and only returning home at night. He even started to steal money to buy food to eat. And he even stole corn and peanuts from the neighbor's farms. And he would sell that to buy food. And you know, boys and girls, one thing always leads to another. So Mariba lied to cover up his wrongdoings. When people asked if he had stolen something, he replied and he would say, No, it wasn't me. But no one believed him. And people beat him nearly every day. Well, Auntie Rosalie saw the beatings and she worried that the boy might be injured seriously. She took him from the family farm and moved with him across the country to the capital, Onakra. Aunt Rosalie was an Adventist and she wanted Mariba to learn about Jesus. She enrolled him in a Seventh-day Adventist school. School was very difficult for him. He had never studied and it required a lot of effort to read and write. It was even harder to sit still at his desk. He was used to spending his days playing outdoors and now he had to sit in a classroom. Moriba couldn't sit for long. After a short time at his desk, he stood on his chair and jumped from one chair to the next in the classroom. The other children liked it, but the teacher didn't. Then crack! Oh, a chair broke and Moriba was sent, you guessed right, to the principal's office. Well, what do you think happened? The principal called in Aunt Rosalie to the school. Oh, I'm so sorry, said Aunt Rosalie. We will do our best so he doesn't destroy school property. But Mariba just couldn't sit still. He was used to being free outdoors. He really didn't mean to be naughty. But... He kept breaking chairs. Every time Auntie Rosalie was called to the school and every time she had to apologize. Well, we will do our best so he doesn't destroy property again, she said. Neighbors wondered whether Mariba would ever be able to learn. They told Aunt Rosalie to give up trying to teach him to read and write and instead to teach him to become a farmer. This boy will never learn, one of the neighbors said. You're just wasting your time with school, said another neighbor. Aunt Rosali stood firm and she just shook her head. Mariba is a smart boy and God will help him to learn. She said, well, God heard her prayers. After the first semester, Mariba began to read well. He wrote well too. And he began to understand the lessons as he kept studying. 
the teachers were filled with joy and they happily gave him extra tutoring every day after classes. Today, Mariba is 12 years old and in the third grade. He can read his Bible, which he received as a gift from the school. And he is now preparing to be baptized. He wants to serve God with his new life. I'm very happy for my new life. People like me now. I'm not the same boy that I was before. I have changed. Jesus, the Sabbath and the school have changed me. Isn't that beautiful? God can change any situation, boys and girls. Now remember, part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will open Kobaya Academy, a much-needed K-12 school in Onakri, Guinea. Thank you, boys and girls, for remembering Mariba and the school in your prayers. Jesus has changed my life. Jesus has changed my life. Story time! Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called A Thief in the Family. The memory verse is from Leviticus chapter 19 verse 11. It says, Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not deceive one another. The message is the people and God's family are honest. Have you ever done something you knew you shouldn't do? And when someone asked you about it, you told a lie? How would you feel if you were caught telling a lie? Jacob lied to his father and hurt his whole family. You would have never thought that Jacob and Esau were twins. They looked different. They dressed differently. They even had different interests. They were opposites. Esau liked to hunt, and Jacob loved to stay home and look after the family flocks and herds. Before they were born, God spoke to their mother, Rebekah. He said that the older brother would serve the younger. She didn't know how this would happen, but she believed what God said. Isaac was now old and blind. He decided that it was time for him to give the special blessing to his son. Rebekah reminded him of what God had said. But Esau was Isaac's favorite, and Isaac was determined to give him the blessing. One day, Rebekah overheard Isaac talking to Esau. Esau, I am old, she heard Isaac say. I don't know how long I will live. Take your weapons and hunt some wild game for me. Prepare the kind of tasty food I like and bring it to me. Then I will give you my blessing. As soon as Esau left, Rebekah called Jacob to her. She told him what was happening. Then she said, Don't worry, Jacob, I have a plan. Go to the flock and bring me two of the best kid goats. I will prepare food just the way your father likes it. Then you can take it to him and get the blessing. Jacob replied, But he will know the difference. Esau is hairy and I am not. Father would know I was tricking him. He would curse me rather than bless me. 
If anyone should be cursed, it will be me, his mother responded. Just go and do as I tell you. Rebekah gave Jacob some of Esau's clothes, and Jacob put them on. She also covered his hands and neck with goatskins. Then Jacob went to Isaac with the food Rebekah had prepared. Isaac heard Jacob entering the room. Who is it? he asked. Esau, your firstborn, lied Jacob. I have done as you told me, father. Set up and taste this good food and give me the blessing. How did you find the game so quickly? asked Isaac. God helped me, lied Jacob once again. Then Isaac said, Come close, so I can touch you. You sound like Jacob, but your hands, they feel like Esau. Are you really Esau? Yes, father, Jacob lied again. Then come and give me some of the food to eat, said Isaac. Jacob brought the meal to Isaac, and Isaac ate. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come here, my son, and kiss me. Jacob went to his father and kissed him. Ah, Isaac said, satisfied at last, the smell of the field. And so that was that Isaac blessed Jacob. Jacob hurried away. He had just left when Esau entered his father's tent. Here is the food you asked for, father, announced Esau. Isaac trembled. In a shaking voice, he asked, Who are you? I am Esau, your firstborn, replied Esau. Then Isaac said, Who was just here? Was it Jacob? Isaac knew then what had happened. He turned to Esau and sadly said, I blessed him. I blessed your brother Jacob. Esau was furious. Can't you bless me as well? Jacob cheated me out of my inheritance. Now he has cheated me out of your blessing. Can't you give me anything? Isaac sadly shook his head. The blessing has been given. I cannot take it away. Esau muttered as he left his father's tent. When my father dies, I will get what is mine. Jacob knew he had done wrong, and he was sorry. He felt sad. His lies had caused problems for everyone. He should have waited. God had made a promise. He would not have needed Jacob's help or Rebekah's help either. What would happen now? Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for Gracelink.net. Animation and artwork by Giorgo Godoy. Audio is post produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. And now, boys and girls, it is time for our activity. We will be making a truth box. So you have to ask mom and dad to help you cut all along the dark lines. And then you need to fold all the dark lines, the long folds, the short folds, fold all of them and get mom and dad to help you to fold the box and you can use some print or some cello tape to fold the box together you'll notice that it even has a little lid and then you can decorate your box you can even decide to make it a different color or use a different color paper fold the pieces Put the box together very nicely 
and decorate it with some pictures, some stickers, some flowers, whatever you like. You can decorate your box. Now remember boys and girls that the theme for our story and lesson today is people in God's family are honest. People in God's family are honest. And so we're calling this a truth box. And this truth box will remind us every day to always be truthful. And this is what you need to do. So I've chosen to use some buttons. You can even use some pebbles. You can use some coins. Whatever you find lying around in the house. And this is what you need to do. If you tell a lie to someone or do something that hurts that person, put a pebble in the box or one of your little stones, your coins or a button like I've used. Okay, so if you've told a lie, if you have hurt somebody, put a pebble in the box. Then at the end of every day, Take out your pebbles into your hand and when you say your prayers at night, tell God what you have done that has been wrong for each of those pebbles and ask God to forgive you and to help you to always be honest. Right? So you will take each of those pebbles into your hand and as you say your prayers at night before you go to bed, ask God to forgive you and to help you to always be honest. Remember Jesus will forgive us and he will always help us to do better. When you have asked Jesus to forgive you, empty the box and put all the box, your pebbles or your buttons back in the bag and thank Jesus for allowing you to have a fresh start. Ask him to help you to always be honest. God's people are always honest. Activity is a banner of truth. A banner of truth. Can you remember who was outside the New Jerusalem? Let's look again at Revelation chapter 21, verse 7 and 8 to see who was inside and who was on the outside. Let's read it aloud. Revelation chapter 21. Verse 7 and 8, and it says, He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, 
and he will be my son. Verse 8 says, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and the liars, their place will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death. So, the scripture tells us who will be on the inside of the New Jerusalem and who will be on the outside. Now, boys and girls, we are in a battle and all who follow Jesus gather under the banner of truth. So let's make our banner of truth. On one side, we have written, with Jesus' help, I will always tell the truth. On the other side of your banner, I would like you to write down your name onto your banner of truth. And when you have finished your banner, you can either partner with your mom or dad, your brother or your sister, and share with him times when it seems hard to tell the truth. Wave your flag and say, with Jesus' help, I will always tell the truth. With Jesus' help, I will always tell the truth. Now think about it. When is it hard to be honest? When we have done something wrong, that's correct. And who will help us to always tell the truth? Of course, Jesus will help us to always tell the truth. And sometimes, if we have erred, Jesus will forgive us if we ask for forgiveness. And lastly, why do you think it's always better to tell the truth? Because when we tell lies, it always creates problems with others. And sometimes, boys and girls, we have to tell another lie to cover up the first one. So, remember our banner of truth says, With Jesus' help, I will always tell the truth. Our message for today says, people in God's family are always honest. People in God's family are always honest. Thank you so much for visiting with us on this Sabbath day, boys and girls. Did you learn something today? Did you enjoy the program? I hope to see you again in the same place next week. Let's close our eyes and pray once again before we leave. Dear Jesus, thank you that we know that it's never a good idea to tell a lie. Help us to always be truthful, no matter how hard it may be. We know that you will always be there for us and help us to tell the truth with your help. I pray for each little boy and girl listening to this story today. And I ask that you would send them some extra help so that they will always know that you are nearby. Thank you, Jesus, for all the blessings that we have. Amen.